Hello, my lungs are still sucky. Uh, and I have to do this over. Okay, try it again. Hi, doggy. Why I don't advocate for an armed revolution. Oh, and I should say, this is a rather weird one if you feel like noping out. This is, this is basically about my own personal morality and thoughts. I do not feel I can advocate for an armed revolution in a moral sense. Why? I take five different medications to not die from asthma. We're not talking discomfort here. If I had no medications, I'd probably be dead or at least very sick in a week or two. And this is not when I'm sick with what might be COVID. This is uh, ordinary. In any kind of war that involves an actual civil breakdown and a supply line breakdown, I will become a carcass very rapidly. Even if I get off my fat butt and get in better shape, I mean, I'm trying to lose weight right now. My lungs might be able to get better, but they have been scarred since I was six years old, and I've definitely lost physical resilience over time. I'm getting older. TLDR. I am not able to be a guerrilla fighter. And I think if I can't fighting, can't fight, sorry, in a shooting war, it's not ethical for me to advocate for a shooting war. I can't even be support staff because I can't assure access to my suite of survival medications. That's just the way it is. Uh, You know, so basically, were I to advocate for revolution, uh, uh, armed civil war style revolution, I would be saying, here, you go out and die for me. That, that just strikes me as disgusting. I'm not going to do that. So... If you believe that we absolutely must have armed revolution at some point, I think you should get together with like-minded people, arm and train for the possibility of a window of opportunity for that. And don't tell me about it, all right? Don't tell anybody about it. We don't need to know. Okay? Understand that I am going to embrace civil resistance, which is a discipline of its own. It can work. Does it always work? No. Does armed resistance always work? No. Sometimes revolutions fail. Sometimes civil resistance movements fail. Understand that I am going to do my best and I will understand that you're going to do your best and again, I don't want to hear about it. However, 
I do need to very clearly point something out to you would-be revolutionaries. Understand that if you take down civil society without preparations to supplant it in some way, millions of people are going to die, not from being shot, but from lack of food, lack of water, lack of medication, and lack of basic care. You can create, you can create uh, structures to prevent that from happening. Or you can let it happen as a result of your actions. Because as god-awful as the system we have is, as creaky and ugly as it is, a lot of people, like yours truly, are depending on it to survive. If you're willing to, to bring it crashing down and let millions die, to overthrow the system and bring on the revolution, that really says something about your motivations. And I mean, we're actually talking about like ill in the United States often equals poor because illness creates poverty when you don't have universal health care. Uh, and a lot of poor people are, and also poverty creates illness. So you're talking about a lot of people that aren't that well off are going to be in deep doo-doo if the system comes crashing down. Whereas the rich, the people you and I both dislike, they're going to just flee the country and they'll be fine. It's the poor and the lower middle class people who are going to have serious trouble if the system collapses. Anyway, if you're willing to let millions die to bring in the revolution, that really says something about your motivations. Millions of innocents, mind you. I mean, I thought we're trying to create a more just society, right? Does creating that more just society require, uh, require um, does that justice omelet, omelet require a few million broken innocent eggs? Because if so, I'm really glad I'm a vegan.